Hello, and welcome to another episode of Real Life After 70. I'm Mike Reynolds, and I'm your host today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some dementia issues, and it's a if I can remember, anyway. No, I shouldn't make a joke about that. Dementia is really a serious, serious situation for millions of people. Oh, gosh, I tell you. As we get older, our risk factors uh, increase, uh, you know, faster and faster and faster. In fact, age and getting older is the single largest risk factor involved with the dementia. Um, and not to say that everybody's going to get it, uh, that doesn't happen, but a lot of us are subject to it. So anyway, age is the single biggest factor, but, and that's really not very modifiable, but there are some factors that are modifiable. And I'm going to go over a few of those today, uh, not in a lot of detail because each of these factors uh, they deserve uh, a, a discussion on their own, and maybe more, and they deserve a lot of research on your own part, because there's a lot of information out here on the internet, and a lot of it is very good, very reliable, and comes from a good source. But there's a lot of other information out here that's really just misinformation, and uh, some of it is designed to steer you in a different direction. Some of it's designed to take your money away from you. Uh, you got to be careful what you're looking at on the Internet. So anyway, I do want to do, just kind of go over a little bit as far as what some of the the uh, factors that are really modifiable for us. And uh, these aren't in any particular order. But, um, you know... Okay, here's one. Emotional loneliness. Now, we don't, I don't know. I never really thought about that, I guess. And, you know, what is emotional loneliness? Uh, and it can be, uh, you could be surrounded by people all the time and still be lonely. You could feel lonely. And that's what it's talking about is the feeling of loneliness. And that's in our head. And when we, you know, you start complicating things in your head. Uh, that can lead to some other stuff. So anyway, that is one of the factors, is emotional loneliness. Another one is hearing loss. Now, I have some hearing aids, and I rarely wear them. Every once in a while, when I see a bunch of birds out and tweeting and things, that are, I think they're tweeting, because I can't hear them, I'll run in and I'll put those hearing aids in, and hey, I can hear the birds. So, But uh, for other things, it makes me... Uh, a lot of other noise too loud. So anyway, but I, I don't find it is a, negatively affecting me. But hearing loss can because it, it affects our ability to communicate with other people. And when our ability to communicate is diminished, then uh, that's, uh, that's going to lead to some frustrations, and frustrations can lead to other things. So anyway, that's another uh, risk factor that is modifiable because we can get hearing aids and we could use them. Uh, smoking, ah, that's another one. God, I tell you, I started smoking when I was probably eight or nine years old, out behind the barn type thing, you know. Everybody smoked. I could pick up a cigarette butt and puff on that thing, hey, uh, you know. Friends of mine, you know, we'd hang out and we'd ch challenge each other. Who could inhale best? Oh, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, it started early and it lasted a long time. So, you know, I feel fortunate to have lived as long as I have because uh, uh, other people haven't. So anyway, smoking, if you smoke, give it up. You know, hey, it's not a, that's not rocket science there for sure. Anyway, smoking is a is is a, is a huge risk factor in in many health issues. Now another one is physical inactivity. Now, physical activity, boy, I tell you, you got to get out and you got to do some stuff. The more we move, the better we can move, and uh, the less we move, the harder it is to move. And boy, I tell you, inertia is that biggest first step. But we can overcome it. We can get out. We can do some hiking, walking, you know, just yoga and do whatever is good and you can feel comfortable doing and push yourself a little bit. 
But again, like any of this stuff, you know, check with your doctor before you start any kind of physical uh, activities or something like that if you're not used to it. So, and again, you know, the kind of very similar to the physical activity, which isn't any surprise, is an unhealthy diet. Of course, you know, if we start, you know, we are what we eat. Hey, that's what they say. So anyway, an unhealthy diet, uh, do your own research, find out what's good, what isn't good. And, you know, try to incorporate some of the good stuff and uh, and try to reduce some of the not so good stuff. So anyway, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, we're going to I'm going to de- dive into some of these factors and modifiable ones anyway. And uh, let's work together and try to improve our lives. Because, uh, hey, we only got one, and we might as well be able to try to be as healthy as possible and keep our mind as active as possible. There's a lot of things we can do to help that out. Uh, I give you all kinds of encouragement. Uh, You know, we're going to have all kinds. Check out our website because we're going to have all kinds of resources, and we're going to vet these resources because that's important to have information that you can rely on. So anyway, good day for day for now, and I look forward to seeing you on another episode of Real Life After Seventy. Hey, don't uh, oh just uh, just enjoy life, baby. You we got this one time, and we want to keep it going. So bye for now.